Yo, 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 what is going on, COD Familia? It is your boy BN, aka Mr. Kingdom Builder, and today we got a special one for you all. Finally, we have heard from the in game system mail, which is kind of weird to say when I think about it now, but without further ado, we are going to be doing a full breakdown for what will now be the upcoming update, which sounds also slightly weird when I say it like that, but that's okay. This is update 1.0.12, Crucible of Courage. It's going to be coming out on the 11th. Now, I want to point something out here, right, before we really get into everything. This was a hope of mine that we would try to see at least two more updates before global release, right? We all know now global release is February 21st, 2023. Now, that's a tentative slash expected release date anything could still happen, right? It could get pushed back. It could happen earlier. We still don't know every single eligible region that's going to be happening for it. However, I was hoping that we'd see one in January and then we're going to get the final one in February, which would be the big one before we go into global release. So this video, we're going to do the full breakdown of the patch of the upcoming patch notes slash update that we're going to be seeing here for this latest update, as we usually do. So buckle in. I'll have timestamps, of course, as well, if you want to go to specific sections. I'm excited, Mundoed. Let's, before we get in, as always, if you enjoy the content, make sure you sub, like, ring the notification bell. And if you want to join and be a part of our conversation, hit up the Discord. You can find a link to that in the pinned comment description right down below. Let me get my Princess Pony Kids Cup water sip here. Oh, that's glorious. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> so it says, <clears throat> uh, and we're just going to skip to the, obviously the meat of everything, right? The latest announcement from the Merchants Guild is that version 1.0, right? Crucible of Courage will be released on the 11th of January. So that's two days from now, maybe a day and a half, really. <clears throat> okay, and I don't think there's anything else here, right? Sadly, Cyclops, Ringway, Gauntlet, Warrior, and, uh, here are amazing prizes. Me and Drunk, you're going to try our luck. You wanna... Okay, cool. So here we go. Number one, a smoother route to prosperity. Added a legendary flying hero. What? Just off the bat, already giving us the goodies? Uh, Thea, or Thea, overall PvP support. This is interesting that they decided to go overall for flying. I wonder if this is going to end up being more of a kind of flex where you can kind of pair with maybe Atheus, who's a little bit more focused on flying on the magic side, maybe Craig. However, maybe you run Thea primary and then you can run Atheus Craig secondary possibly. Uh, right? We'll obviously have to see how the overall works because with those two, they didn't run overall, right? Even though it's kind of a mixed bag. And obviously, you probably look to Atheist a little bit more, but so we'll see. But this is cool. I love it, right? Getting a little more flying now. And I also want to point this out. I like how they're not just releasing 20,000 heroes all at once. We're getting, we're getting staggered hero releases, right? And I like how, because you have different... Uh, and I don't want to spend too much time here, but I like because you have different types of hero usages that you could do. You could, I mean, think about it. You could either have mixed. You could run three flying, two mages. You could run an, You could run all infantry. You could run all archers. You could run all mage. You could run all flying. I mean, there's just all cav. I mean, there's so many different ways that you can really approach how you work your eventual five legions and then how you work with other members of your alliances. And it's just, oh, just the, the, just the, the strategy, the tactics they are. Ugh, Jimmy just from brain blasting all over my face right now. Okay. And we got an epic hero, Pan. Peter Pan. Overall gatherer. So we get another gatherer. Oh, thank you, right? Because now we're kind of, I think we're at about five gatherers now. And uh, I don't want to, don't, don't, don't make me work hard to quote this. Uh, but, I mean, not pure gatherers. I think we're at four pure, pure gatherers uh, after Indus. And then you have a fifth one, which has just a gathering skill, but they're not necessarily a pure gatherer. I think, I think that's one of the uh, elite heroes, one of the blue heroes. Oh, I don't forget. I'm forgetting the name off the top of my head. I feel so bad. Uh, but this is awesome, right? So we get another gatherer. We get overall support, which also could be that maybe Pan could be someone like Eliana. Right, where maybe because it's overall, right? remember you have heroes like Hosk, you have uh, Indus, you have Eliana. These are more of your overall uh, kind of flex secondary deputy heroes that you can run in, op in in kind of the open PvP field, right? Outside of Hosk, where you're probably going to be more predominantly using him for rally lead. This is something that is nice, right? When you're kind of adding in a secondary one, right? If you need a more flex pick, this is probably going to be something maybe more on the free to play side, just depending on what the skills are for Pan, but nice to see. Uh, both are now available to summon. This is cool. I wonder if this means that these heroes are getting added to the arena so that way you can pull them from chests. If that would, if, and Now, if this is what that line means, that's a W for me. I like how we're mixing up 
<clears throat> right? The amount of heroes that are that are able to be summoned by everyone versus uh, them just adding in more that are just immediately gated. Right, because Bakshi is, right, so you can't necessarily get Bakshi that way, but it is nice to see. So, again, that this to me is a W, just in this first line, and I'm shocked I'm already spending multiple minutes here. Uh, new dialogues and stories for Bakshi, Alistair, uh, and Garwood, trust systems for these heroes have also been unlocked. Talk to them to discover their backstories. Cool, I like that. Trust system, get some uh, free rewards. Improved development paths for gathering type heroes. Gathering type heroes can now unlock the talent Earth's Grace earlier, allowing them to gain hero XP through gathering and leveling up faster. That's a W for me. I love that, especially with the reset system that we see for seasons, being able to level up specific heroes or just any heroes faster in any way, that's a win. However, non-gathering heroes can no longer gain hero XP through gathering Ooh, interesting so they actually removed the ability for because this is something that people were doing right where you'd run a secondary or a deputy hero and then you'd gather and then they would be able to get the extra xp as well so i like this so non-gathering heroes can no longer gain hero xp through gathering or sorry uh excuse me it was sorry you would also get general xp right from gathering let me let me state that uh Interesting. Unless what I said the first time was the more accurate one that I'm thinking of. Regardless, this to me, I think actually seems like a good move. Now, now I know it may not seem that way initially, but if they're trying to go down this path of we want, uh, excuse me, of we want to have things that are more in line with the direction the game is going, and they're trying to kind of fine tune certain of those paths, then you could say this is in line with that. Sure, the other side of it is that, okay, well, now we can't gain extra XP, right, from gathering with non-gathering heroes, but it's a give and take, right? It's, it's you know, are they trying to be true to the system that they're implementing versus, you know, do they want to try and give everyone the best of both worlds, right? So I'm not actually, I'm not necessarily opposed to this, uh, right? At, at least from my opinion. I'd love to know what you guys think. Uh, and then we have, uh, here we go, strengthen the artifact Breath of the Forest. The artifact skill effect Aria now removes one random uh, one random debuff every effect every two seconds for six seconds, so up to three. Previously, it would only remove a single debuff effect. I actually think this is a improvement to it because now what can happen is if you get multiple debuffs stacked on you or if one happens within a, a couple seconds and another one happens within another couple seconds, now you have the ability to remove. So this actually to me is a nice improvement the way they're working this for Breath of the Forest. We have significantly reduced cooldown for Artifact Staff of the Prophet. Its cooldown is now 8 hours regardless of level. Previously... 16, 14, 10, 12, 10, 8 hours for levels 1 through 5, respectively. Okay. I mean, that's cool. To be honest, man, I'm really of the mindset that, to me, I actually would like for them just generally to make artifact cooldowns a lot less. And I say this I say this because being able to use artifact skills multiple times in a fight is part of the enjoyment. Like, to me, that's really where I think the game should be going, right? So instead of 8 hours, to me, they should have this be 8 minutes, Right? I'll take 80 seconds even because you have to think about it. You're constantly fighting. You're constantly doing DPS damage from your legions and even if you uh, exclude artifact usage. So being able to have more engaging fights means uh, can happen from if you're able to reduce the cooldowns from artifacts a lot faster. Right? And that to me, I hope, is something that they may see as well. Now I'm not saying it should be 8 seconds. Right? But having it be shorter to where you can maybe use it a couple times throughout a fight, it doesn't mean that that's going to be your primary damage dealer or primary save, right, so to speak. That's going to be your uh, your icing on the cake. So I actually would love for them to make artifact skill usages a lot shorter, just in general, so that way you're able to use them, we're able to see more artifact skill uses. If I not, now again, I'm not saying we should be seeing them every second or every eight seconds, but even if it's just more than one time, that would be dope sauce to me. That's my general thought and feeling on it. Again, we'd love to know what you guys think on that one. Uh, then we have reduced, before we get to number two, reduced the mana cost of upgrading buildings in your city while increasing the gold, wood, and ore cost. Overall resource costs will remain the same. So basically they're just, it's almost like they went from 20, 20, or 25, 25, 25, 25 to now... 
like what 30 30 30 10 or something like that uh so yeah i i don't i don't actually think it's necessarily bad uh, i mean man has obviously always been a little bit harder to gather um obviously compared to some of the other resources so i don't necessarily see a problem with this and maybe it'll actually be better for the majority of people here we go increase the amount of dragon glass that can be obtained hourly from dragon trail okay i will take that as a w a greatly reduced the price of legendary and epic hero tokens in the dragon trail store increased the price of epic metals epic lucky metals and epic titan metals okay I mean, I'm going to go with a yeah. I mean, again, if those things for legendaries are being decreased and it's saying greatly reduced, then I'll take that as a W, especially if it's something on the free-to-play side that's a little more friendly, where I can't go wrong with that. Now, I will say this. I would love to hear, like, if they if they said this is what the current price is and now this is what it is, or this is like, so for legendaries, this is what the previous price was, this is now what the price is. Include that information. Give us the breakdown, just like you did here, where it says previously 16, 14, 12, 10, 8 hours. Do the same thing on every line. Trust me when I say the community will appreciate that, because I would appreciate that. And I'm not necessarily saying that in a way where I'm the community, just in general speaking, that it's nice to give a breakdown, right? And, I, and again, that I think would be great to see. The fact that I don't know what that is now, and I have to go dig for that information, I'm going to be honest, to use my boy Shikamaru's stuff from Naruto, what a drag. Okay, let's go to number two. More enjoyable events. The new Crucible of Courage event is now available. Prove yourself worthy in an area arena filled with increasingly difficult challenges and win incredible rewards. Interesting. Hmm. Crucible of Courage. I wonder if this is going to be kind of like an arena-style system that we saw in Infinity Kingdom, where, or like, I guess, or uh, Sunset Canyon type thing. For the rock comparison, or maybe something different. Still, I want to point out, I love how... You know, every update they're trying to at least come out with one new event, right? And it's not something that they're trying to kind of overpower or under deliver on, right? So, I, again, I, I'm, I appreciate that. Uh, let's do number three an improved alliance system. Ooh, the goodies. Here we go. Added a new behemoth raid preparation feature. Ooh, before attacking behemoths, level four uh, alliance officers can ask all alliance members who have deployed legions to confirm that they are ready. That is sick. I love how they're giving us more preparation, utilization tools, and features within the game to improve quality of life. These are the kinds of changes that I love to see, right? A way where you can do something <clears throat> in, like outside of just using or even adding in more specific emojis, right? that will be more pvp focused right doing those types of things so when you're on the field right if you're not able to all be in a voice call you can do that another change i'm gonna i'm gonna advocate for is what if they allowed for you to join an in-game voice call or if everyone's in a specific area and doing pvp Anyone that's online from your alliance has the ability to opt in, right? Not where it's passive, but you'd have to choose to opt in to some type of just real-time voice call uh, whenever you have legions and other people that are within a certain area, right? So it's almost kind of like a, uh, not a nesting, but almost kind of like a group real-time voice chat based on the people who are near you. But then maybe you have another option where you can just join a general in-game voice chat for people that are there. That, to me... Almost seems like it could be the future, right? If you think about it, where you could be on... And then there's also maybe like a transparent thing that pulls up on the side or something that says like, here's everyone who's in the call. And then you can scroll and then you have the ability to minimize it. So you can minimize it or you can open it. That to me, that's the next level stuff there, baby. It really is. But I like this. This is a good change. Uh, because again, it shows you who's actually there and who's not. So you don't have to rely on people just texting you can do something in game where you'll see like a ready check from everyone so i love that uh changes to alliance buildings alliance resource centers and alliance keeps can now be connected to the alliance roads that is dope alliance leaders obviously can connect them uh to the alliance roads through the road management screen dude another just great quality of life improvement why now you can either think about this you can now place keeps maybe a little bit farther maybe in different strategic positions to where you do not necessarily need to leave them immediately close now of course you're probably going to put them in specific situations when you think about on the opposite sides of passes 
But the fact that you can connect a road directly there to reinforce a little bit faster, that's awesome. If you want to get to a resource center a little bit faster that's off the road a bit, nice. I mean, I don't think that that's going to change you know, too drastically, but it still will in, it still will get you there a bit faster. So that's a W for me. Alliance resource centers and alliance keeps can no longer be built in locations that cannot be connected to a road. Interesting. Interesting. That, to me, I will say is a W, right? Because they're going along in the process of, like, I'll give you an example. An example is that if you build a keep, at least, let me say, I believe this is the case, right? If you build a keep that is within the uh, a passes zone, uh, I don't I don't know if you can build a road there, right? Now, I'm going to have to think about other examples of where you may not be able to connect a pass. Maybe maybe if you maybe if you build a solo keep, right? Maybe if you were to build a solo keep onto uh onto like somewhere that's not close to any roads. Uh into a road, yeah. That cannot be connected. Can no longer be built in locations that cannot be. Yeah. So, so maybe that means you have to build keeps on alliance territory, so to speak. I mean, if that was the case, why don't they just say that? Because <laughs> that's what I'm thinking about a little bit more. Okay. Uh, next one. Uh, when building alliance resource centers and alliance keeps, construction will begin automatically on alliance roads leading to said buildings. Ooh, that's nice. I like that. I like. I actually think that's just a nice quality of life. I mean, don't get me wrong. I would be totally fine if they said, yeah, you still need to go and build it, right? But I'm not necessarily against this one, right? So, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, improved territorial relocation. You can now use territory relocation even if you have scouts deployed outside your city. When relocation is complete, your scouts will continue carrying out their orders instead of automatically returning to your city. I'm a fan of this. I really am. Because to me, you know, it's like sending a scout out and you're moving your caravan unit, you know, back in the olden days. You know, you, you know if they're, you know that they're along this path, you're just going to have to catch up to them however you do. So, yeah, not to maybe say that's the best real life example, but I'm okay with this. Uh, okay. We have, uh, here we go, improved alliance markers. Alliance marker accounts can now be duplicated up to 10 at one time. Oh, but Jesus, thank you so much, right? Or Buddha, whoever you pray to, this is fantastic. I love how we are, now I'd love for them to add more, I'd love for the ability to have more markers in general, uh, but I like the fact that it, it just kind of general universal ones. Now, I don't know if they're saying, uh, like markers, maybe it's like a sub marker, right? So maybe you have the main markers, then you can have sub markers, which that's where the, the up to 10 duplicates come from. This is still a win for me. I love the fact that now we can have more markers. I would actually love if they could do more kind of PVP overhead markers. Like an example would be, let's say you have the, because again, you should obviously have a toggle option. There should be a toggle option to where you can have the ability to toggle on and off markers, right? If you were to like, let's say you were to overhead map it. Let's say you zoomed all the way out and you and you toggled certain markers and it gave and they were able to give you like real time theater of war updates, right? Or maybe they drew an arrow or something going here. There was a little note. And or maybe it just said like, hey, here's what our real time action plan is in the game. So you're more connecting and engaging with your your alliance members so they can be more up to date without having to necessarily read a mail or have to go on discord and read an announcement you can kind of give this theater of war approach to how what it looks like and then when you scroll in now and then you get to finally where you can see the troops now you're looking at more uh, right and you can still see markers right you can still see markers obviously when you're zoomed out but you can see a little bit more of what's happening maybe you can draw like you know i don't want to say squiggles but maybe you do something where like this is red this is green like being able to maybe uh, have like overlay tools overlay drawing tools that you can use as like an alliance toggle for members that to me would be sick uh, but again, I love the fact that you could still get more markers overall from what it seems like. So that to me is a win. Uh, the Alliance welcome message now includes the name of your alliance and your alliance leader improved. Uh, so yeah, I, okay, that's nice. I like that. Improved display effects for alliance territory on the map. Alliance territory borders now more clearly displayed. This is a W for me because some of them were a little, I want to say light in tone and color. Uh, and some of the borders were just not as crisp, right, if you will. They weren't as standout-ish. Uh, that we that we could see depending on some of the colors. So this to me is actually a W. Love this. Okay, now we go. An even richer combat experience. Added the Legion multi-preset feature. You can now deploy up to five Legions in one action and save your Legion configurations for future use. Dude, this is a W. 
right? Because you have to think about it before you had, you would have to preset each individual legion and then you'd have to send them out one by one. The fact that you can do a five legion preset, right? Or how, or up to five legion preset. And then you basically just send them all out in one go. I mean, why hasn't this been thought of before? Love the fact that we are just getting so much what I would consider to be just frontier pioneer pushing uh, features and approaches from Call of Dragons right, compared to other kingdom builders. This to me is a big W. I love this. Uh, fixed skill descriptions, uh, description issue f issues for Hoska Nico, change description for Hoska's Furious Rage skill now refers to normal attack crit rate and counter attack crit rate instead of crit rate Oh, I see. So it, it gives a more specific breakdown. I love that. The skill effects remain unchanged. Change description for Nico's skill convalescence now reads Nico's Legion gains onslaught and repost, uh, increasing normal attack damage and counter attack damage dealt. Previously, Nico's Legion, Nico's Legion's attack speed was increased. This to me is a W. Uh, and shout out to my boy Sage who uh, pointed this out to me or had mentioned this as well, uh, with also letting me know that the, I hadn't had a check to a chance yet to check the in-game mail. So this to me, I, I'm actually happy with this because I think the 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 now if they could actually do something like increase attack speed, where if you added real attack speed, where you could do two hits per second versus the standard one hit per second or whatever the rate is, then okay, you're selling me on that, right? Where it, it might be kind of more Age of Empires esque, right? Where you're seeing, or like League of Legends, right? Where you're seeing faster attack speed, and then you can see the attacks actually going out in the animation that much faster than a than a Legion who doesn't have attack speed or less attack speed. Now, if they eventually get to a point where they're including that in the game, then okay, dude, now you're just going to push another boundary for me. Right now, the game is just becoming that much more godlike. However, because you cannot visually see the animation, or at least from what we would perceive as visually being able to see the animation of increased attack rate from having more attack speed than another legion, I actually like this change with them just kind of saying, look, we're just going to remove this because maybe it's a bit confusing. Let's just say it's going to be, you know, flat attack damage. Uh, skill name has also been changed to Gray Mars Crossbow. The skill effects have been, the skills effects have been slightly changed. Okay, I get it, I get it, I get it. So now we're on three. To improve the effectiveness of infantry units, the following changes have been made to infantry units, unit skills and Madeline's passive skills. Oh, interesting. Hopefully this isn't a debuff. Changed infantry unit skill perseverance. Physical defense increases when unit count is reduced. Physical defense will no longer be reduced if units are healed. Physical defense increases when unit count is reduced. But that would just mean you're at a flat rate and then it, it's only going up. It doesn't go down. Physical defense will no longer be reduced if units... Are, oh, I, oh, I see. Interesting. Okay. Oh, wow. So they're actually just going to keep it. So it's almost like here's your physical defense... As and here's your unit count. As your unit count goes lower, right? Let's say you have thirty thousand units, and it goes to fit to twenty thousand units. Now your physical defense is increasing. What it's saying is that the if your units were healed and you went from twenty back to thirty, uh, then right or twenty back to thirty, then the physical defense would come down. What it's saying is that if the unit is healed and it's like this, and right, then you still have the physical defense. Hopefully, what what it does though is it uh, provides a flat raid so that way if the unit's healed and then the and then the unit count goes down again it doesn't immediately increase right the physical defense doesn't immediately increase again like like it stacks hopefully how they have it set up is where if you've lost a third of your unit count you've increased physical defense by a third or 33 percent but then if you heal and you lose a third again it doesn't then increase again right it'll stay until you lose more units right hopefully that's how it works uh because if not I don't want to say that could be abusable, but I don't want to say that it couldn't. <laughs> so, uh, again, I hope that's that's how it is. Uh, changed Madeline, uh, Madeline's skill per piercing gaze. Previously, when Madeline's Legion has less than 20% units remaining, they gain resistance, reducing all damage taken by 10, 15, 20, 25, 30%. Revised. When blessing, when blessed blade's shield, uh, blessed blade's shield is broken, Madeline... Madeline deals physical skill damage to up to three surrounding units, uh, legions, damage factor 150 or 300 scales with physical attack. I'm really confused here because these are two different things. Piercing glaze and then uh, legion has less than 20% resistance reducing all damage. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, because, sorry, it's because it's, oh, wow, so they're, 
changing sorry shield and resistance i should say revised when blessed blade shield is broken madeline madeline deals physical skill damage up to okay so wow so they're removing the whole thing we're, we're gonna have to look at this in game to see what the hard change is if they're just removing one or removing everything and this becomes the new one um well, I mean, obviously, they still get the shield. So maybe they're just changing... That's Maybe that's what it is. Maybe they're changing resistance to just physical skill damage. If that's the case... I will say this. If that is the case, and they're removing the resistance, right? Uh, and they're switching it to this, which is now just physical skill damage, right? Then I would say that's rough. Uh, right? That is. That, I mean, even though, yeah, sure, you're giving a little more damage. I mean, Madeline is just super tanky right i mean that's kind of what you sometimes need you need an ultra tank in order to soak up a lot of damage right so you can apply i mean the same thing is in league of legends right you have tanks and you have off tanks and ones that are basically just uh you know just absorbers you know i, I actually think that's really needed in cod so we'll have to see what the change looks like obviously once the in-game changes have taken effect uh so we changed madeline's skill sword of sorland Previously, when Madeline's Legion, let me see here. So previously, wow, dude, they actually did a bunch of changes. So previously, when Madeline's Legion has less than 20% units remaining, they gain resistance. Did they just double up on this? Hopefully this isn't a typo, and maybe I'm just not on the same page. Uh, reducing all damage taken, okay. And deal physical skill damage. Damage factor 1,000. Scales with physical attack. This effect cannot can be triggered once every... Oh, oh, revised. When blessed blade shield is broken, Madeline deals physical skill damage to up to three and gains resistance, reducing damage taken by 10% for four seconds. I'm going to be honest. Part of me feels like there's a little bit of a typo here. Are you guys seeing this as well? Or am I just crazy? <laughs> okay, so someone let me know. Um, okay, number four. Improved hero talents to maintain game balance. Improved gathering type heroes foundation talents, allowing them to more quickly level up gathering talents. Uh, which, that's a W to me. So, right, I mean, I, this is the thing. I actually think foundation talents should be based on what that hero's primary type is. Right? Are you gathering? Are you cavalry? Are you infantry? Are you overall? Right? I personally think foundation talents should be a little bit more ad adapted and reflected of what that primary hero's focus is or what that hero's primary focus is uh, but this is still a win for me i actually like this change adjusted control mobility attack and support talents uh oh interesting so that means we're gonna have to retake a look at some of those improved talent branches for gathering pvp peacekeeping rally infantry cavalry marksman magic precision skill support control and mobility talents what does that mean i'd love for that to be a little more specific does that mean that you're adding higher percentages. You're adding higher numbers. You're just giving the each of the talents more. But that'd be nice to know. Battle mechanics were made more balanced and some talent attributes were reduced. Again, give us some specifics. What does that mean? It is important to give a breakdown and a detailed explanation of, or I mean, I'll, leave, I'll even just take a brief detailed explanation. I'm not saying you got to write a paragraph here, but at least give a breakdown and define what you mean so that way we're not over here just guessing, right? Important to do that for transparency and due diligence. Uh, and then we have right, all heroes. So here we go. All hero, all hero talents will be reset after the upgrade is complete and talent points must be redistributed. Okay, that's cool. I actually think that's that's nice of them. Improve the rules of battle. Clarifying. Oh, wow, dude, here we go. This could be big. Improve the rules of battle. Clarifying the four methods by which legions can deal damage. Normal attacks, counterattacks, hero skills, artifact skills. Each of these four methods can be affected by corresponding buff and debuff effects. Ooh, this is cool. For example, normal attacks can be affected by normal attack crit rate bonus and normal attack damage bonus effects. In addition, each damage method can only be affected by its corresponding buff and and debuff effects. For example, the hero skill damage dealt bonus effect only applies to hero skills and does not affect artifact skills. Okay, I like that. They're trying to be a little more detailed, trying to be a little bit more specific and separate some of the of any variants that may be there. I actually like this improvement. Okay, now we get to number six. This is a big one. Remove the concept of attack speed. It will no longer appear in game. Okay, I mean, this kind of goes with what we saw for the Nico change. Slightly increased physical magic attack, physical magic defense, and HP for all level five units. Incre slightly increased physical magic attack, physical magic defense, and for level five units. Do they mean T5 
units, tier five units. I'm going to assume that's what they mean here. If that's the case, I guess I'm actually okay with that because, you know, part of what we often hear in, for those of you that play Rock, is sometimes you'll hear players say, well, hey, it's not really worth going to T5 if you're free to play, right? Sometimes they'll even say that for any for anyone in general, right? Just depending on your view on it. So if they're giving you more of a reason to actually upgrade to T5, I don't see that as a bad thing. Would love to hear your thoughts though. So, right, let me know in the comments as usual. Behemoth's levels are now displayed on the strategic map. That's great. I'm going to take that as a W. More details, a lot um, a better visuals for quality of life. Thank you. Improved error messages shown when dragging legions to carry out commands during combat. If not affected by particular statuses, legions will carry out your previous command. Okay, I like it. Uh, removed CP limitations for casting artifact skills. You can now cast artifact skills even when you have negative CP. Okay, that to me is a W, right? Because artifact skills really should be being generated off rage, right? Uh, as we know. And so I like that now there's no like secondary, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, hurdle, right? So to speak, that they have to go over. Okay. Other adjustments. How much more do we have? Oh my God. Well, okay. So this is, this is a good bit, but we're, we're almost done. We're on the last part now. Adjustments made to honorary membership perks. Level nine members will now get a new buff that increases CP recovery speed by 10%. Okay. Uh, I'm actually not necessarily opposed to that. Uh, and then we have the buffs of level 14 and level 15 members were swapped. Before, level 14 members were given Legion March Speed and Heal Speed buffs, while level 15 members were given a Train Speed buff. Now, level 14 members will get a Train Speed buff, and level 15 will get Legion March Speed and Heal Speed. I'm, you know what? I'm actually okay with this one. Uh, again, even though it's a swap, I like the idea that more of the PvP-focused buffs are at the end, right? Depending on how you view that, I, I actually think that's okay. I'm not that I'm saying, oh, I'm the biggest advocate for the change, but I don't see that as necessarily a bad thing inherently. Uh, the daily gifts of level 8 members were changed. Now they will get a speed-up item instead of two epic hero tokens. I'm going to be honest. It's like everything's going so good, and then you get the wrench thrown in, right? So I'm going to say this. I, I will say this for the first time. I personally do not like this change. Uh, I, I think this is going to further devalue VIP. Not to say that I think people will still deter away from leveling it because it still is arguably probably the best thing to really invest gems into when you think about just the longevity of what you get overall from it with buffs. But this to me... Now, if they're going to increase the rate, right, and maybe compensate this in another way, then yeah... Other than that, this is rough, dude. I mean, this is too epic. I mean, yeah, wow. I just... If they gave an explanation for why they're making this change, I think that would help give a little more context. I don't think it would change my view on this. This, to me, I think is just, is just in my opinion, the wrong way to go when it comes to how you now view... I mean, you could argue this is kind of crushing a little bit crushing to the free-to-play community because you would argue that players are really investing heavily into VIP because of the overall value that you get out of it on a daily and passive, passively from buffs. And they're also doing it to try and get, uh, to try and max out their epic heroes. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not like, it's not like they're not going to be able to max out their epic heroes at all or any, any more. They still will. But this was a nice passive addition and so I'm just not a fan of this change, right? I think that this hurts more. I think this hurts more than it really helps. Don't get me wrong. Universal speed ups is probably one of the best substitutes you could go with, but I just don't think that it really, I just don't think that it's the best change. So this is just one I'm not in favor of. Uh, then we have the daily gifts of, of level 10 to 11 members were changed. Now they will get gold a gold key instead of keystone copper. I'm actually okay with this, right? And you can make the argument that maybe that's helping the two epic hero situation, right? Compensating a bit. Same thing. The daily gifts uh, of level 12 to 15 members were changed. Now they would get a gold key. Okay. Now, now again, I'm assuming this means like same thing for the keystone copper thing. Like you're replacing keystone copper with a gold key. Uh, right, and again, if, if nothing's being taken away outside of just the keystone copper and you're just generally adding 
something, right, without without kind of higher value subtraction or removal, then I'll take that as a win, and that does somewhat compensate for removing the two epic hero tokens, but it still doesn't, it still doesn't change my opinion on the level 8 change. Then you have the daily gifts of level 14 members were changed. Now players will get to choose two legendary hero tokens instead of one. Okay, this to me is a nice reversion, uh, or you could say general change, where I like that you can do that, However, I'm still going to say it just to reinforce it, right? I, it still doesn't change my opinion on the two Epic Hero tokens. But this is a nice addition, and I'll take this as a W, <clears throat> right? Because I do think it should have been more than one Legendary Hero token. So I like seeing that change and that recognition from the devs. Then we get to number two. Resource points with dwindling resources remaining will automatically be removed from the map more quickly. Oh, Interesting. This, to me, actually is not a bad change. And I think this kind of somewhat compensates for resource points that are just forgotten or just not fully uh, gathered, right? Uh, and, and then you just let the normal... So I like that, that they're making this adjustment. This, to me, is actually a beast change when I really think about it. Uh, so here we go. The Epic Hero Token item obtainable from the Honorary Membership Store, Honorary Membership Daily Gifts, and Titan's Legacy Daily Chest has been changed to the Hero Token of a specific Epic Hero. Players must choose the hero whose token they wish to receive before claiming or purchasing the item. You can select heroes who you already own. Okay, so maybe this even further compensates for the loss of two epic hero tokens. And I'll say this, if it does turn out to be okay, then I, then I will revise my previous statement on not being in favor of it to kind of being just breaking even. But I'm going to wait to see how it plays out in game. Uh, improved reminders on how to gain prestige. So we have, oh, we're almost done. Uh, tapping the prestige icon will show more detailed information regarding how it is obtained. I appreciate that. You could also tap the go button to quickly open Dragon Trail and gain prestige. Giving, I think, more explanation and more details on how to gain, how to do something, how to achieve, that's always a win for me. Uh, it's more quality of life. When you do not have enough prestige to enact a policy, a notification will be displayed. You can also tap the Get More button to quickly open Dragon Trail and game, game Prestige. Standardized, number five, right? Standardized mail display format. The first and third lines on the left-hand side of the message will display the message title and sender respectively. Okay, if they're helping mails a little bit more, I'm actually a win for this, right? I still think that they should add in some ready checks and some opportunities to do other things in mails as well from uh, an alliance lead or officer that's sending them. Like we said with, you know, multiple hour, maybe maybe even doing polls in mails where you can add custom questions and have people respond and then you can see the feedback that way. That to me would be dope. Um, I would I would love for the ability for you to like send a player a direct message and maybe it links to a mail that was sent uh, or you can send a reminder to them or something. Uh, something like that. Uh, but again, uh, I still think this is good, right? We'll have to see how it looks in-game. Uh, and I'll say this. I would love if they could, like, work something in where maybe they can just, like, paste an image in here to show an example of what it would look like, right? I don't know if they have the ability to do that in mails, but if so, that could be cool. Other than that, <clears throat> that is it for us, right? Obviously, uh, your pal and business partner, Kella, for sending this out. Uh, always give feedback on what you guys think as well. I'm always a big advocate for that. I'm going to say this. Overall, for update 1.0.12 Crucible of Courage, I think this is an overall win for the game and the direction that COD is going in. Again, albeit a few, and I will say respectively, a very few amount of changes, right? Less than I can count on one hand, where we're either iffy or just not necessarily immediately or initially in favor of it. I still think the update overall is a resounding win. I think there's so many more positives than there are kind of questions or opportunities in the update that I'm excited. I cannot wait for these changes. I mean, this to me is such an amazing, I would almost categorize this as the quality of life update before we get into global release that is such a big win, right? So I absolutely love this update wholeheartedly. I think the direction that COD is going in really hammers down on more of the foundation for what the developers are seeing and where we're going. So again, I'm happy to see that. 
right? So again, I can't wait for this to come out, and then we'll do a, an in-game show to show you guys what some of those in-game changes look like. But this is awesome. Let me know what you think, though, right? Do you agree? Do you disagree with some of my opinions on some of the changes? Do you have your own thoughts? Let me know anything and everything in the comments down below. That is it for me. As always, until next time, we will catch y'all later.